and you're going to take that clown show to the national stage? Denver Broncos Mile High View, no commercials, no fucking bullshit. I couldn't even make anything like that up. You better get tough or you're going to die because you are a joke all across the National Football League. It ain't, it ain't a joke. That's for real. Me and Colby have been the only Bronco fans that said, look, stop listening to Sports Talk Radio. You got a full-on clown show, and it starts at the top. I'll tell you this, Denver Bronco players, uh, <laughs> you're either going to get tough or die. You better stop listening to Sports Talk Radio and believing Elway's fucking bullshit. Uh, when you go to Cleveland, maybe you should think, we're going to punch you right in the mouth and nothing else is going to matter. We're going to beat the shit out of you and nothing else is going to matter. But no, are you going to be a bunch of pussies? That's just what I need to figure out. I, there's a lot of fans that just blame the quarterback, fire the coach. Blame the quarterback, fire the coach. Wash, rinse, repeat. Wash, rinse, repeat. That's insanity. So this organization will never be respected or even be respectable until, uh, you know, hopefully a good owner comes in. That could be uh, wishful thinking too, but it can't be any worse than, than Ellis and Elway. So I'm gonna, we're going to go and get into this film study, which is no different than, I'm sure only three people will watch it because Bronco fans don't want to know anything except wash, rinse, repeat. That's all they know because the same people who misled them same, very same people about this team. They're going right along with this whole, uh, yeah, fire the coach. Everything's going to be fine after that. Who in their right mind would, as a good, what, really think about it. What shit hot coach would want to come here? Just, just, you know, ask yourself that fundamental question. Let's go on with the film study. All right, first touchdown by the Raiders really is a window in how the rest of this game is going to go. Not exactly what you would call jaw-dropping running by the Raiders, but it was enough to set them up with third and shorts. The defensive line for the Denver Broncos during that whole series when Carr went back to pass was non-existent, like all the other games. Um, I'm here to tell you the Denver Broncos defensive line is probably one of the worst in the league. News flash to you. Darby gets beat. I don't know the status of his injury. That's very un-Darby-like uh, to be that sluggish, to be honest with you. But Justin Simmons' help is, is literally pathetic. His safety help is, is abysmal, and the man has no business yelling at a coach. This is going to keep going on all season long. Denver Broncos do not have the player personnel. It's, it's beyond coaching. This is Elway's mess. Elway brought these players in, not Fangio, because this has been going on long before Fangio was even here. The Broncos offensive line is just getting pushed back right into uh, Bridgewater's face. Something we at Mile High View said the Broncos need to invest in. Garrett Bowles just gets schooled. Nobody drafted Garrett Bowles except one guy, Elway. And Elway's just hell-bent to make his players, his, his, his picks, like Simmons, there he'll do everything in his power to protect them. All other good players actually are good. He could care less about them because he didn't pick them. That cancer upstairs has to go. What teams, I, I don't know, have, they haven't figured out is that the Broncos' offensive line sucks, and if the DBs just kind of back off the receivers a little bit of Denver, Bridgewater will be under duress and probably throw an underthrown ball, and if they just back off a little, could pick it off. And this is kind of a classic case. Instead of tangling up with a receiver, you should have just let your, your D-line do their job and, you know, Pick off a teddy or at least bat down a, a teddy floater. And this is a classic case where you should have left well enough alone. First series, they had a good mix of run, and they seemed to be able to run the ball on this team. And it was a good mixture of run and pass, and they were able to get the job done. And it, quite frankly, this is probably the only highlight in reality for the Denver Broncos. Raiders have a big play, and this is due to the fact that nobody on the defense knows what the fuck's going on. I gotta blame Vic Fangio. Sure, you can blame him, but you gotta blame the players too. Callahan screws this play up by single handedly. Number 11 is his man. He's signaling to the other corners that 11's going to your side. Well, Callahan has to, uh, it, he can't just stay where he's at like he did. 
He's got to drop back and prevent this guy from having a big play. That He's responsible. If you're saying that you're saying, okay, you on the corner on the, le- on the left-hand side is responsible for number 11, then I got to take the middle of the field now because there's nobody Callahan is covering. So he's got to be responsible for the middle, the slot. The slot's coming from the opposite end. As soon as the, re- the receiver, and he acknowledges this receiver and says to the corners, go take 11, Callahan has to make his adjustment and get to the middle of the field. I mean, this is just football 101. So Callahan, you're, you're signaling to your corners, Callahan, they've got number 11. You've got, to make the, uh, you've got to make the adjustment. You can't just sit there covering nobody before the snap. That's just ridiculous. You know they're going to attack the middle of the field. Callahan end up is covering a running play that's not happening. It's not going to happen, but that's not his responsibility. That's Alexander Johnson's responsibility, and he's on the wrong side. I mean, the linebackers are completely off, off, off assignment, too. So this is a breakdown between both Callahan and the linebacking. Callahan in no way should be trying to plug up this running back. That's Alexander Johnson's responsibility. He's got it. Once he sees 11 drag across, he's got to make the adjustment and get into right in front of Carr about 10 yards, 8 yards in front of Carr. And any receiver that's coming in that area, he's got him. This is a completely blown breakdown, both schematically and just awareness. You can blame Fangio all you want, but just from a player personnel standpoint, nobody has a clue on what they're doing here. Bridgewater with a totally open receiver. Uh, miss miss fires and these 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 things will kill you. Miss fires wide open midfield. Yeah, just bad. Puts Broncos in yet another third and long. Okay, I've got to talk about this third and seven and Pat and Pat Shermer. This this is what we saw that that he was drawn up with a lock and I call these these drive killing um, play designs. Shermer has two receivers almost at the line of scrimmage. They're only about three yards, three and a half yards from the line of scrimmage. This is a third and seven. Now, I understand you, your offensive line sucks and that you're only going to get, you know, a couple of seconds, to, if, if, if that, to get the ball. If I, I, I understand. I, I realize that. that but that's, that's a problem that goes, stems at the top. Uh, because there's no emphasis on that. You can't, ex- you know, I don't know what, it's just a wasted third down. I mean, you have to try. Send these receivers at least to the sticks. Uh, again, it's just typical Shermer, waste, uh, just a waste of play. This is like a no-down play, I call it. You know, it's, it's, it's a no-down play. Here's where you can blame Fangio. They've gotten away with too many fourth downs. Um, and we were telling you that so long. It was bound to catch up with you. Bridgewater, you know, overthrows, throws it right to uh, the linebacking who it can actually catch, unlike Alexander Johnson, <clears throat> just saying. Just a horrible decision by the coach to go for this. If the players wanted this, you got to shut them down. You got to say, no, you guys. And, and I'm blaming Shermer, too, because that was a third uh, a, th- a third down that uh, a wasted third down play just the way in design and concept then a bad decision after that it's all bad football it's bad uh play design and it's bad for on the quarterback it's just bad football all the way around from the player personnel side although the offensive line actually gave him a shot at this they gave him a shot at this it's almost as if too the the raiders were saying yeah go ahead and throw it and uh that's this is what you get and this is why the Broncos just can't. They're not e- even remotely a playoff contender. They're, even a, they're not even a playoff pretender, let alone a playoff contender. Just all kinds of bad on this team. From the top, Elway, down to the coaching, down to the players. You notice that I keep showing this uh, same clip with the highlight over and over. Bridgewater can't make this throw. He just, he can't. Lot can. He can Bridgewater can't get this ball as fast as it needs to get there before it closes down. Locke can. I just want to make that point because this is the all 22. But no, you 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 made you you went this direction. So I'm just saying you went this direction. This is a, a open receiver. Locke could hit and get it there quick. Bridgewater is even going to look that way because he knows he's not going to be able to get it there that quick. You have an offense that's already kicking your defense ass. 
on, on many different levels. So you're going to give them a short field. That You're going to do that. This is just, just, it's bad all the way around. Well, this is, again, just simply not using Fant. You, you can't, you're not only using Fant in this blocking scheme, because the guy can't block. You know that. You got tight ends that can. You, then you, when you, you draw up a, a, a passing play, you, you throw to him in the flat. I just don't, why don't you have him go right at the defender and make it do what he's good at, going at the defender, making a cut? And this isn't Vic Fangio. Vic Fangio, again, didn't, didn't, wasn't tossing and turning to get three wide receivers set, Kansas City style system that, you know, the poor man's version that Shermer brings. That's was totally Elway to bring this guy in. Shermer never had the, never used tight ends. This is not what he ever did. It's just poor concept design from Shermer. But Elway, you wanted to bring him in. You, you you had to have it, and now you have these online platforms defending Shermer. It's it's because guess who who wants him? It's Elway that wants him. And okay, here's here's some place I'd rather see Locke. You're still in this game, and this is the second pass, deep pass that Bridgewater's missed. I just believe I honestly believe these kind of plays. I just got more faith in Locke than I do Bridgewater. Just to be honest with you. Again, the guy's wide open. It's it's either over or underthrown. Thank God it was overthrown. Um, but again, misses a wide open target uh, with Cortland Sutton again. In how I was talking about the incorrect way to use Noah Fant, this is the correct way. This Raider play first and ten. The play design here is is what you would expect. You would expect with with instead of throwing the stupid out in the flat. This kind of nonsense. This is the kind of stuff that Fan can do, but they Shermer refuses to draw these type of plays up. And here's again where problems start. Um, it's inconsistency. You, the Denver Broncos were doing were doing pretty good running the football, but they're just not consistent run blocking. It just is they're not consistent pass blocking. Uh, this should be at least you know it's second and four. At least get three yards out of this thing. And I think it's actually a, uh, a sack. Here's how not to use Fant once again. Uh, this is another one of uh, Shermer's wasted down plays. We have um, go routes going straight into coverage. And if you watch, see the All-22, these two go routes, uh, these receivers run right into coverage. You have two tight ends, I think Schobert and Fant blocking one lineman. You know, again, we talk about player personnel. The tight end should be able to get the one, take the one block. Fant should be able to, instead of engaging, do a delayed route and take these one of these two guys on. I don't care which one it is, but I'll take Fant over any one of these guys. And you've got all this space behind them that you can run into, just, just behind them. At least minimum, you should get five yards out of this, at least, just on first down. You should at least minimum be able to get at least five yards on this play using Fant. But no, all you did was run go routes into coverage, right into it, with nobody else to throw the ball to. It is like one of the worst. This is why he's an absolute bad offensive coordinator. This just this it's just mind blowingly bad play design. I didn't go into this film study with the idea that I was going to be defending Drew Locke or or uh, lobbying for him. But when your eyeballs tell you something that sports talk radio doesn't want you to see, I guess, um, because all I hear is, oh, Locke, oh my God. <laughs> um, the more I look at this, the more Locke actually looks better. I mean, really. I mean, and when you see this, you're asking yourself and how Teddy played in this game, that Locke can't play better than this. I think you're fooling yourself. You take a look at this play here. Uh, Teddy gets sacked on the sack. He cannot make this throw. Everybody's covered, but until the receiver here makes his break. Right here is where, you know, if you get Drew Locke, you get that ball there, it gets there in a hurry, he can make that throw. Bridgewater cannot do that. That's why Bridgewater takes a sack. Now, does Locke see it? Uh, well, he's he's seen this a lot. He's made these throws a lot. So, I mean, they're just hell-bent on making sure Locke is not on the field. But, I mean, this is the direction you wanted to go, so you're stuck with what you get. Bridgewater, third and 16. Way to go. Did you know that you got better pass blockers in there and yet you you want to be stubborn and basically in my opinion you're trying to really showcase how to get rid of Fant 
That's what you're trying to do. Fant, uh, once again, holding, drive killer, 10 yards. And the Broncos cannot sustain uh, first and 20s and first and, you know, 15s. They just, they can't get out of that kind of thing. Now on the second and six, I believe if you get lock in here, this is a completion, but just Teddy takes too long to really get it, to, to really recognize it and get it out there. And it just gets busted up by the uh, the defender. You know, in, in Teddy's defense, I'll say Patrick still has to hold on to that ball. But, you know, also, I think he would have been able to secure that ball had it got there a bit quicker. And, again, that's my lobby for Locke. And nobody, you know, oh, it's clearly he glotches. Oh, are you going to put him in? <laughs> yeah, I would in, the, in a situation like this because he would have had the time to secure the ball better. I mean, he just got the ball. It's kind of tough to secure right when you're getting hit. So, yeah, I would put Locke in, in a situation like that, yeah. And Cortland Sutton can't push off, so, I mean, you can argue all you want, but you pushed off. Clearly, he's got to throw the flag on that. That's on you, dude. You, you got to know better than that. You got to be a good route. route good route runners don't, don't really do that. They, they just run the routes. Now, you only, got a, you only have a, a minute to be on the field, Broncos defense. <laughs> Do you think maybe you can stop them yet again? Here the, the DBs get no help from their uh, the defensive line. Go figure. Another another day, another game, another a quarterback reading war and peace in the pocket back there without any problem at all. We're, now we're in field goal range. Raiders, only 37 seconds left in the game. This touchdown by the Raiders is is just, it's just typical Broncos all the way. Carr with plenty of time yet again. Just like all the other quarterbacks, even the ones that we won the games on, all day to throw the ball. Where is Draymond Jones? Where are you fucking moronic assholes who defended that? Where the fuck is he? Oh, nowhere, of course. You're going to blame Fangio? because He didn't want 45. No, he wants somebody else. They made the call to Zayvon Collins. Can you people just get a fucking clue? Basically, I have a, um, a whole third quarter worth of audio carded based off of what I saw, but essentially it's everything you've already saw, but just a different version of it. I'm going to end this, but I got a disclaimer I've got to put out there. And uh, that is um, when I say that Locke uh, could be a better option than Teddy Bridgewater, um, I, I have to apologize to a certain degree. And I know there's a, a, this is irony on many levels because I didn't want Locke. But for one thing, I don't think it's fair. Again, this is irony on many levels. Uh, I don't think it's fair to Bridgewater to get him, you know, I know he's a warrior. There's no doubt in my mind about that. But why put him out there just, I mean, he's over, he can barely move right now. He, he can't even walk up to the podium. He's so beat up. There's so much disdain. There is obviously Locke was Scandrello's pick. And uh, there's so much disdain for players that aren't Elway's players. And it's not just Locke. It, it goes across the board. Maybe uh, Scandrello talked Elway and to bring in Lindsay. I, I don't know, but it seems like that if, if you're not like Simmons or, or you're not like Bowles or Paxton Lynch, just seems like there's a, there's an obvious, there's just obvious players here. I don't get Elway. Um, they're going into Cleveland with a guy that's, you know, basically should be uh, using a walker right now. And that's not fair to him, really, to be honest with you. And quite frankly, you are you asking? Uh, you have so much disdain for Locke, and you're going to ask him to save you guys. Uh, that's definitely what you don't want. I know that your pride's too much for that, uh, and that would be again irony on on many levels. But uh, like I said, you're going into Cleveland. It's, it's just you better have a, a you know get tough or die attitude because you you Denver Broncos are a a joke. It's a clown show, and if anybody thinks different, rewind my tape. See the very beginning because you can't make this shit up.